Hi viewers, welcome to this episode on Quick Talks. So in our today's episode on Quick Talks with Rajwardhan, we have C A Navin Nagraj. Uh, to you people, he'll be C A Navin Nagraj, but to me, he was Gelaya Navin from the time I know him all during my few days to be very precise. And uh, C A Navin Nagraj, as you can see next to me, is a partner in M S N A and Associates LLP. He's basically into assurance and consulting. But uh, as I know him personally, he's been an amazing writer way back from our times. Wherever he used to quote something or ways the way the perspective that he used to give to things that we always see was really fantastic. And trust me, he's a really good friend to have. I'll tell you what the kind of experience that I had with him also as and when it's uh, required during the talk. But uh, right now, without wasting any time, let's get into the show. C N Navin Nagraj, please. Uh, ha- I heartily welcome you to the show and uh, thanks for sparing time and then making time during your August and September. uh to enlighten the upcoming chartered accountants out there hey vardhan it's a pleasure being here so excited for this show okay hi navin so firstly uh, like let's see when we were in our pu days we were very clear like okay fine if there is something supposed to be a pinnacle in the profession that we were sorry the course that we've taken the commerce stream that we've taken should be chartered accountancy so we had this conversation one fine day if I'm, if i can actually recall uh but did you actually imagine being here like being chartered accountant and uh, what to say post qualification working somewhere else that is always there but setting up your own firm with uh, your own set of rules that you always wanted to live with uh, working with your own people and working the designing your life the way you wanted it to be so uh, did you imagine being here uh i think precisely the answer is no i'll be lying if i say i always knew this is where i'll be but uh if i look back now 5 years before 2015 january i have a, i have this habit of journaling my thoughts or having a vision board or having my dream list so if i look back now when i just found that diary my old diary 2015 jan i had written that uh, and i in my dream list i had this one point where say uh, which said i will have to establish my own organization someday wherein Uh, i had to work with a clear vision of being concerned every single day so and the entire team has to do the same thing so now when we actually like uh, i had written it and maybe i had forgotten about it but things have uh, its own way of coming back to you so now when we actually look at it our vision is being working with a clear vision of being concerned and that the way i had written there is exactly how we are functioning now as well so i think maybe the i uh, answer is no and yes to the same question okay see uh, it's it's like it's one part of the answer that you told is like pretty simple like you just have to have a vision you just need to write it down but after you wrote it down in 2015 what basically did it take for you to make it come true from 2015 to 2020 so what does it take to uh, become a chartered accountant basically uh, what did it take to you i think basically uh, a lot of things like it's all always about connecting those dots so one thing leads to the other and other leads to the other and that is how a journey is actually made so if i look back so if i can uh, for days from christ university juggling between bcom to uh, ca and then the article ship of 3 years and then uh, ca final clearing it and then working in an organization for two and a half years then taking a sabbatical to determine what is it that what is it that my next step should be and finally being here i think everything has just happened to me at the right time and the right things have happened at the right time so uh, it's always about connecting the dots the dots you can only do it while moving forward that's that's pretty interesting the way you told i can still recall those days wherein you went out on solo trip to just determine what what big step should be should you be doing in your uh, life and everything <laughs> so I, i i still recall those moments wherein you were doing okay so, yeah so maybe maybe that really helped you and uh, uh, taking things ahead no so you basically got into practice like getting into practice is something easy post you clear like you just apply for cop or cop or else you can start practice but surviving in that sector of practice actually needs some kind of uh, distinctive characteristic distinctive attitude all by itself is what i personally believe so i want you to know what does it take to survive in practice basically i think uh, the first part of a uh, part of it is about why are you starting first of all Mm-hmm. so when i uh, how i visualize it is let's say there are two two and a half lakh chartered accountants and one lakh 
uh, plus chartered accountants are in practice and maybe in uh, bangalore alone there are some uh, thousand chartered accountant firms in bangalore alone and in jainagar where we practice there are maybe 100 plus chartered accountant firms so with all this why is it that someone has to come to you you must be clear about your intention of starting practice more importantly what is your usp your unique selling proposition what is it that you're offering to the uh, to the people so uh, are you just adding on to the competition or are you differentiating and trying to offer something else to the table so i think intentional uh, uh the intention in which you start your practice or your organization any organization for that matter i think that determines everything else and the next part of the question of uh, what what does it take to survive in a uh, practicing uh, in a in the field of practice i think most importantly it is perseverance and patience because trust me like uh, a lot of time is it's always about sowing the seeds without having any expectation of it coming back to you so you're just doing uh, at least the initial days or i think even going forward you're working on a lot of things without having any expectation of it coming back to you so if you are able to do that with a lot of patience and perseverance uh, i think that is what it takes to survive and trust me it's not easy so it takes a lot of self doubt lot of uh, efforts to be there and keep doing it without with just having a hope that some day things will be better some day things will be much better you yeah, talk about that self doubt and then uh, hoping that things to go really fine sometime down the line this happened to me as well like when i just cleared my second pc and i was really confused whether to take up a full time bcom or to take up normal bcom it was always very messed up situation i didn't know whether to take up a full time bcom and then put my uh, ca course on stake so i choose not to but i still remember those days you were like little to, you, you took your time but once you took your time you were very clear like okay fine i'll do my bcom from christ and i'll continue doing inter but i my article should be get postponed right still cool with it so you were clear about it but right now what happens with me is now when i look back when i when i when i see people saying that they really enjoyed their college life i regret a little that i didn't really enjoy my college life that's one kind of a regret that do you have that i basically have i basically have so do you have any sort of those regrets during your entire course of ca like at any point of time do you feel like you could have done things little different or done things little better or not done few things too so do you have any such regrets or uh, honestly if i look back uh, the answer is no because uh, like let's say even personally when i as an individual i always think that i should live my life on my own terms without having any regrets basically okay. so if uh, if i look back now i should not be having that i should have done that maybe i didn't do it i think a lot of things have happened right in this journey rather than a lot of things that i have missed so i was very specific that college uh, life is something that comes only once once you are out of it maybe the entire thre- the threshold there is a new journey altogether so it's very specific about that and maybe uh things uh maybe you will have a lot of things have contributed its own way and I, as i told you like right things have happened at the right time for this to unfold itself and i think uh, the, the you will have to be clear about a few things that you want in life and in, and once you're clear about it the path just opens up in itself maybe yeah and and still fresh like few fresh memories that i have with you is the those times wherein after you watch a movie or after i watch a movie we used to introspect saying okay what was the best part in the movie how can things could have been little different in the movie and then no the kind of few observations that you used to tell or you t- you told me once if you can recall that you wanted to be a, become a filmmaker or be, basically become a writer or make a movie so that that really made me like oh fine so i i really have people around me who actually want to speak their heart out and then make a movie and they don't just don't just want to tell like okay fine i've taken up commerce i want to do mba i want to do ca so they didn't re- you didn't really sound like that then so uh, post qual you told me one fine day like okay fine one fine day i'll definitely make movie like if things go fine we should be making a movie or something of that sort so basically all of us have passion different different uh, sorts of passions few of them singing few of them dancing few of them making movie uh, writing as well so uh, post qualification is it always a choice between money and passion like if i choose to pursue my passion that might not give me enough money that i want to make or if i choose money that might not keep my passion intact so this is question that all of us go through during our what to say post article should be so like just after we clear uh, is it always choice between money and passion how did you handle it or how should anyone handle it 
uh, the way I look at it is I don't see there is always a, a juncture wherein you'll have to decide between money or passion. I think you can always couple it both. So you can always find a path which can give you the best of both worlds. And uh, it takes time, but it is definitely possible. Uh, the way, the philosophy that I believe is of uh, Jai Shetty, wherein he says, if you want to choose a career path, always ask these four questions. What are you good at? What is it that one thing that you love doing? What does the world need? And are people willing to pay for it? So if you are able to ask these questions, each question has its own significance there. What are you really good at? And once you're good at, do you really love doing it that you don't, you just don't care about time. Like when I, I remember when you are teaching, I'm pretty sure that you are just being there yourself. You are just, yeah. you don't worry about time. You don't worry about anything else, maybe even physical attributes. And what does the world need? A world needs a different person uh, to bring out a different, like let's say a world needs you always. And lastly, are people willing to pay for it? That is a, again, a very important question wherein you cannot say like, I will choose this path and I cannot pay my bills. So you will have to balance it out always. So if you're able to answer this question and if you're able to fit in your passion there, I think that is, you're, you're actually living the life on your terms the way you want it. So when I, again, when I look at uh, the, the profession that I have chosen, for me, it is in it is just one part of my entire purpose in life. So there are a lot of things that I don't want to just leave it for anything else. I want to ensure like I'm okay, like I don't leave my passion just for the sake of anything else. So I think if you're able to answer these four questions, maybe you're there. Yeah, that gives you a sort of a clarity as to choose uh, the answer. And uh, the, you, as you are basically into practice, uh, we would have basically seen our principle during our articleship times. And we would have been like, okay, fine. If I get into practice, I'll be somewhere here. So we would have seen it. Maybe if it, it industry, it might be a little different. So uh, you can answer this question better than anyone has to. How different is uh, this articleship times with the life after qualifying? Because a lot of uh, people who are watching this video are people who are pursuing the course. So they will just be... Uh, questioning themselves as to how different would their life be uh, post qualification how much of changes will it be so i want just i wanted to just tell as to how how different was your life during articleship and how is it now i think articleship is a comfort zone uh, it is like being in your mother's womb and everything is taken care of maybe when we are there when we are actually pursuing our articleship we have a lot of uh, concerns or we have a lot of things to crib about but once you are uh, out of it, once you are a qualified chartered accountant, the expectation that people have on you is enormous. People think you know everything, which is not the case. Uh, but when they realize that you don't know a particular thing, they start judging you. So articleship is one phase where you need to definitely give more than 100%, I must say. I'm not even saying 100%, I'm saying more than 100%. If by any chance, the way I, how I look at it, or even during my post-qualification when I was working uh, in uh, another organization, and even now when I have uh, uh, do, interact with my own articles, I would always tell them like, if you are working on a, even a smallest of the small things, let, let's say if you're working on income tax return of an individual, just think, have you given them enough benefits that you would have given in your own return? Or if you are uh, working on a statutory audit and if you're just working on one particular area in that, just think if you are the chartered accountant who is signing this, will you be able to sign on that particular area that you have done? So will you be able to give that, uh, that comfort to the signing partner? So if you are able to do the, even the smallest of the small things with utmost sincerity and utmost uh, clarity, so I think then uh, that is what will take you forward in the post-qualification phase. And post-qualification, I think it's always a journey. Like when you are in doing your articleship, you think, okay, there is a bigger thing when you're uh, a qualified chartered accountant. And when, when you, you're a qualified chartered accountant, you realize that okay, you're starting a, a fresh now. from, And again, people will be there to judge you always. So I think it's two, there are two different phases altogether. 
and we all been there we all been there doing our cpt we all been there doing our uh, intermediate and article ship as well as finals and and at every phase of it we actually expected uh, people who gone little ahead of us like when we were in cpt we used to look up to people who were in ipcc as like oh big guys they have cleared cpt and same when we were in ipcc as well and we always wanted to hear from them uh, what is it that you wish someone would have told you during your uh, ca days so that's something that always keeps uh, what to say bothering like the thought keeps pricking me in my mind so what is it that you wish someone would have told you when you were a student is what i want you to tell to all those students who are right now uh, just students but one fine day they want you want to take the place where uh, you are here today so what is your message to all the upcoming chartered accountants out there maybe uh, i have uh, i can just summarize it in uh, these three aspects maybe one thing is if someone had told me back then that i will have to i had to understand the why of doing it before doing what so why are you doing what are you doing so if someone had asked me that question the maybe i would have been more clearer i think my advice to people who are currently pursuing chartered accountancy is always ask this question of why have you chosen the profession so this is a wonderful profession but uh, when i interact with a lot of uh, article trainees i realize that they have joined this course because of parent pressure or peer pressure so there are a lot of courses you don't have to think that this is the end of it and uh, so you when you start asking this question of why are you doing chartered accountancy or what is it that you want to uh, where, where is it that you want to see yourself i think your your way just becomes more clearer and uh, if someone had told me before that exams are just a mind game so exams are just another exams be it ipcc be it ca final exams when you write your first paper that's when you lose that fear of okay this is ca final if you just remove that block from your mind that's a big block that you're moving actually a, a big mountain of your head so if you just think this is another exam i have prepared for it i am i am giving my best for it and i think that is one thing that uh, will they really make a difference and lastly uh, medical planning is what is extremely important for having a good execution during exams so a lot of people of uh, err in uh, planning phase of it so i would always suggest have a proper plan have a backward plan if your exams are four months due so just have a plan which encompasses everything just go backwards and plan for it i think this is one thing that i uh, found out for myself and i would have been very happy if someone else had told me this back then and yeah talking about the planningness being prepared and perseverance that this person spoke about all this now i'll tell you the kind of preparedness that used to have back in 2008 to 2010 all bits so it was one fine evening when uh, me navin and one other friend of us all three of us were walking were walking back home after our classes around in jainagar and uh, we we liked the really nice chat there so we had we loved it but we had spent that that, that day scot of money on that chat we wish we had little more money to eat one more chat so we knew how much of the money each of us had then when we were about to leave we were really sad that we are not able to buy another plate of that chat i mean told us that okay he has reserve fund with him and he can spare that reserve fund and that reserve fund can be refilled again i still recall the exact words that used reserve fund see back in those days we used to see reserve fund in the trial balance and in the balance sheet liability said but none of us ever thought that okay reserve fund can be something actual in your pocket <laughs> so that is a kind of preparedness that used to come with back then and let me tell you he's not given up on that so that preparedness is taken it to a new level a few days ago maybe if i'm if i'm very clear it's like 3 4 months ago navin texted me one fine day and then he asked uh, he wanted someone uh, some article ship reference because he was opening at his office so i referred one of my student and i sent him the resume and it told okay navin you can get in touch with this guy this guy seems good you take him at your own merit so then this is the usual process that goes like if someone wants an article the resume comes they call up and then ask the article trainee to come and they take the interview but that's not what happened with navin so what they did at msna and associates llp is navin has a perfect what is a document wherein it comprises all the details about their firm their llp basically what do they do what is the kind of work that they expect and complete overall picture of this so it's not just like they'll choose which article do they want they basically give the complete input about their firm to him 
and then they will tell me okay this is what we do this is how we do this is why we do if you think it's good place for you 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 can come in so we don't want you to come in because we are paying you x stipend or we are a firm which is close to your house or because you have to do article ship you you should be knowing why you are in this organization so that kind of preparedness just with respect to small article now the thought that strike my mind is is just an article assistant who is hiring and if you if you give kind of this much of information about your organization to an article assistant who basically does not understand the big picture at that particular stage the kind of i would say the service that he might give to client is something that uh, is applaudable and that's something that awes me all by myself yeah so that's something that you should uh, know with respect to the preparedness that is taken up from the few days to the final days and this is what i know and i don't think uh, this is the end of it there might be a lot of things that is uh, really good at it with respect to preparedness and uh, well, i just yeah. wanted to add one point here when we say like okay we are working with a clear vision of being concerned or whatever is a bigger picture there if the person who joins in is not aware of the bigger picture what else how are you translating that vision to the people who are working for you if someone who is joining us is not aware that okay this is exactly the kind of service that we would want to deliver the partners would want to deliver how is it that they'll be able to do more give more than 100% so i think that is where it all narrows down to yeah this this takes us back to that point that you told regarding that usp why, like why should people pay you what is it that you are unique at are you just adding on to the competition or you standing out so this kind of thing is what he basically at that basically drives me to talk to this guy more and more and every time you talk to this guy the kind of mindset that you had before the call and after the call completely changes and uh, this amazing friend of mine is something that is worth listening so i basically requested him to be on this show so that all of us uh, can hear him together uh, say a few things and in fact a few things that he told uh, in this particular talk is something that I, he had never told me previously as well so it was eye opener to me also to an extent and i really enjoyed the entire part and uh, thank you on behalf of our entire viewers navin for being here and then trying to spare your time and uh, yeah if it can help you on one of them it would be really great is what navin told me so that's really kind of you to uh, think in that way and then be part of the show so thank you thank you so much rajwardhan and i had to uh, confess that i am actually envious about your students because i know the kind of energy that you put in while teaching maybe they are definitely very blessed to have you as a teacher and you're extremely passionate the again i'm not telling this because he told kind words about me but i have always seen him as extremely specific about what he wanted in life from you maybe i was not that driven then or uh, he was extremely driven and he was very particular and specific about whatever he wanted and i think he the path he has chosen is something that would inspire a lot of people and uh, he is definitely putting in a lot of efforts and i loved being on this show so i am really excited to see how does it go and what is the kind of response that uh, you would get for the show i would wish you all the very best for this okay thank you navin i basically would like to end it all completely by saying that i am average of the people i may i am hang out with and uh, i started hanging out with you people at the beginning so you have a really good chunk <laughs> of it making me am i taking my average to above average or whatever i am <laughs> so that's really sweet of you to say that and thank you for being here see uh, guys stay updated stay connected with the show that will i will i'll bring in lot of other chartered accountants from different aspects to talk to you about how their entire journey was if it can help you in some sort of your preparations or your post qualification life that would be the purpose that's the intention with which this show is made so see you all in the next episode till then stay in the game bye bye